Hey there, Rob Arnold here to answer some common guitar buying questions I hear people wondering about all the time. I want to get a guitar. Should I buy something cheap to get started on or get something really nice? Will I need to make modifications to my new guitar, like swapping out the pickups or tuners or the bridge? Should I go with a six string guitar, seven string, eight string? When choosing a guitar, should I get one with a Floyd Rose bridge, like with a whammy bar, or should I go with a fixed bridge? And finally, do things like scale length, neck width, body and neck material actually matter? Let me give you my thoughts on all those questions right now. All right, so I'm gonna give it to you straight. You may not like my perspective or my reasoning, but I hope that the knowledge I'm gonna share with you will better equip you in your decision-making process when it comes time to purchase your next guitar or your first guitar, whatever it may be. So here are five concerns, maybe a couple bonus ones too, that I hear brought up all the time when guys are trying to figure out what they need or want in their next guitar. That's what I'm here for, I hope to help, so stick around and let's do it. First, should you buy a cheap, an inexpensive guitar or something really nice or something in the middle of the road. I say always write down the middle of the road. If you buy something too inexpensive, it isn't going to feel right, it may not play right, and it's definitely not going to stay in tune. And those, in my opinion, the combination of those three things are the guitar player killers. The name of the game is inspiration, motivation, the, the yearning to keep playing hearing things and wanting to learn and wanting to play more and more. And if you've got a guitar that doesn't stay in tune well, you're not gonna wanna play more. If you've got a guitar where the action's all whacked out and too high, or it just doesn't feel or sit or even look right, you're not gonna wanna play guitar. On the other hand, if you buy something way too expensive, some $3,000 guitar, maybe down the road you wish you still had that money or you lose interest in the guitar. So that's why right down the middle is the best idea in my opinion. I'm a firm believer in the old adage, you get what you pay for. So in my opinion, a good seven, eight, nine hundred dollar guitar is the way to go. It's going to have great components, it's going to be well made, it's going to stay in tune, it's going to sound great, and that's what you're looking for. As I said, you want something that's going to feel good to help motivate you to continue playing. All the guitar companies make great guitars in that price range, whether you like Gibsons or Fenders or ESPs or BC Rich, whatever. You know, they all have starter guitars, they all have real high-end guitars, and they all have right down the middle. Right down the middle, you can't lose. If you lose interest or whatever, oh well, you can always sell it. And a guitar, a nice guitar, keeps its value too. So you could sell it, hopefully get your money back, maybe even make a profit, whatever. Or if you want to go all in and get your dream guitar, then I back that too. Because again, you know, driving a Rolls Royce, you're probably going to be inspired to drive a Rolls Royce, right? Uh, you, you buy a Pinto or some old Ford Festiva, you're not going to want to drive it. So the nicer, the better, but more risk entailed. That's why, again, I'll say it one more time, right down the middle is the way to go. 700 bucks, 800 bucks, that's what I recommend. Next, something I hear all the time. Well, I need to make modifications on my new guitar or, or even more so guys will be like, yeah, I'm going to get this guitar, but I'm going to have to swap out the pickups right away, change the tuners, maybe the bridge. And I'm just like, why? You know, a decent guitar, again, going back, if you get something at a nice price point, you know, something that's going to last and something that's going to be good for you, it's going to be super well made. There's a lot of super talented guys who are designing these guitars and putting them together and putting the right component and pickup configurations together so that the guitar looks, sounds and feels great. Uh, now, of course, there are exceptions to everything. Maybe you want a certain type of pickup and by all means, go ahead and swap it out. But to go into it with the thought process that, that you're going to buy a guitar and then you're going to immediately have to change the tuners on it, that seems ludicrous to me. Uh, another way to think about it, though, is that, uh, you know, guitars are like cars or like, you know, just things where they have lots of swappable parts. And a lot of guys just like that aspect of it, swapping stuff out customizing it, making it their own. I back that 100%, that's totally cool. But again, the mindset that you're gonna have to do those things, you're not gonna have to do those things. You're not gonna become a better guitar player because you put different pickups in it. You're not gonna become a better guitar player or play better solos or riff harder or anything like that if you change the tuners. The tuners were made to go with the guitar that you bought and I'm sure they're gonna tune just right. And if the guitar isn't staying in tune well, chances are it's not the tuner's fault. It may be some other component and you know, you just, 
you play, you, you, the more you play, the more you figure out what you need. And that's a lot I'm gonna touch, I'm gonna touch a lot about, ugh. The more you play, the more you figure stuff out. And I'm gonna touch a lot on that in this video where you need to have it to experiment to then decide what you're gonna need. As you're playing, as you're learning, as you're getting into it, you're playing, you decide, maybe I do wanna change out these pickups. You know, that, that's, that decision is fine after months or years of playing on it, deciding you want a different sound. Also, what's your amp configuration? The amp has a ton to do with it too. It doesn't matter what pickups you have in your guitar. If you've got a crappy amp, you're gonna get a crappy sound. So think about it that way as well. Give yourself some time with the guitar to experiment with it, to decide what you don't like about the pickups so that you can decide what you do want in a new set of pickups. And another thing is that pickups are a hard thing to just experiment with because it's a lot of work to swap out your pickups and then try it out and hmm, are these better than the other ones? Uh, you don't know. So it's something that you should kind of just like learn the sound of your guitar and how it sounds and how it reacts with your rig before making big decisions like that about swapping out your pickups. Uh, the same goes for your tuners and stuff like that. The only reason I would think to switch your tuners or your bridge if you want some upgrade or something special or customized. At the end of the day, you buy the guitar, just play it for a while, let it tell you what it needs differently so that you can become a better player. This is a great question. A lot of people wonder, should I get a guitar with a whammy bar? And a lot of the time, a whammy bar comes on a guitar that has a Floyd Rose or a floating bridge that uh, you can you know, just scream with. There are fixed bridges with whammy bars. I don't know if it's really called fixed, but they're not a floating tremolo. So there are some variations in there, but let's just talk about a floating tremolo like a Floyd Rose or a Kaler versus a fixed bridge that doesn't have a whammy bar. I recommend starting out with a fixed bridge. Here's the reason. Going back to question number one, you wanna be motivated to play. You don't want any hurdles getting in your way of learning and continuing on your guitar playing journey. Having a Floyd Rose is a huge commitment. It takes a lot to learn how to maintain it and set it up and tune it every single time you restring it. Anytime you wanna change tunings from one string, it affects the entire thing on a Floyd Rose. So unless you have a professional working with you that you can take the guitar to for maintenance constantly or to teach you how to do it or you're willing to put in the time to figure out how to do it, and I'll say, maybe you guys have heard me say before, it took me 20 years to master the Floyd Rose. Now I've got my a good grasp on it. I know exactly what's going on anytime there's an issue. I know how to keep it in tune. I know how to maintain it so that it stays in tune and does exactly what I want it to do. But it took a long time for me to do that. And that's touring the world, playing on it night after night. So that may be extreme. There's gonna be guys that say, oh, I figured mine out right away. Hey, kudos to you. But when you're starting, a fixed bridge is way less problems. It also allows you to be able to tune easily to different, th different tunings seamlessly and that's what a lot of new guitar players want to do too. Oh, I want to play some Metallica riffs, I'm going to be an E. Oh, I want to play some Camaro riffs, I got to go to drop C. With a Floyd Rose, you can't just tune that simply, change big tunings like that. You need to then reset up the bridge, refloat the bridge, all, all that. So while having a whammy bar is awesome and I like it, there's a lot of cool tricks you can do. There's lots of great songs you can play with the whammy bar. I recommend starting out with your fixed bridge so that you can stay inspired and stay jamming until you decide you need a whammy bar, then you move into that, you're already on your route, you're not gonna give up at this point, get yourself a whammy bar then and tear it up. Here's a common one. Should I go with a six string, a seven string, an eight string? My recommendation is if you're starting out, always start with a six string. And the main reason for that is because 99.9% .9 of the guitar curriculum and educational materials, whether it be in print or YouTube or DVDs, are all focused around a six string. That's what you're almost meant to learn on. When you're learning pitches and phrasings and timing and strumming, picking, all those type of things, all the educational stuff that you're gonna be absorbing is pretty much meant for a six, six string. Seven string and eight string guitar stuff is more specialized. There's certainly great educational material out there. There's certainly awesome bands that I know you're inspired by that play seven strings and eight strings. And you wanna get right into that. You wanna get into some super gent, you wanna get into some low tunings. You can, you can drop tune on a six string and still maintain the fundamentals of what I was discussing. You know, maybe it won't sound exactly like an eight string sounds. You really can't get that low, you know, with Easily, I should say, you can't get that low. Um, but you can get low and then you can go back up when you need to as well. Uh, the other part of that is that if you decide to just start out learning on a seventh or eighth string, there's almost this 
extra element. There's this extra string that, you know, people that are teaching you aren't going to be discussing. You're going to have to bypass that seven string to learn on string six through one. You know, one, I don't know if this is going to be a stupid analogy or not, but, uh, you know, a car has four wheels. If you want to learn to drive a race car, the guy that's going to be teaching you is also going to have a car with four wheels. But you showed up with a car with five wheels. So he can still show you how to drive, but all of a sudden there's this fifth wheel that you have to manage. You don't know what to do with this fifth wheel. It's just this extra thing. Eventually you may learn to use that fifth wheel to your advantage. Get around the corners faster or drive faster the next day. I don't know. Just like eventually you may learn to use that seven string to your advantage when you realize its potential. But a lot of guys that start with the seven string limit themselves because they don't realize what the potential of having an additional 22 or 24 frets in a seventh string can do for the guitar. And they get stuck in the mindset of just playing down here, only playing open one, two, three, and all that. Now granted, nothing wrong with that. No disrespect, all that sounds awesome. But I feel you miss out on the fundamental scope Everything the guitar has to offer, I'm getting too deep with it. Sorry about that. Get what you want. My recommendation is though, start on a six, and when you're ready for a seven, graduate to a seven. When you're ready for an eight, graduate to an eight. You can even go six to eight, you know, but if you're just starting out, learn the fundamentals on six. If you're already a player, go ahead, dive right in. That's what I did. I got my seven string gears after I've been playing six, and I found it just wasn't for me. I didn't even like that additional element. The only thing I liked about it was just the cool low sound, and I get that. If that's what you want, do it. Finally here, do things like scale length and neck width and the material that the guitar is made out of matter? Absolutely, but not at first. You don't need to be thinking about those things at first. It's just like the components of the guitar that I talked about with pickups and tuners and bridges and things like that, where you need to learn what you want from a guitar. If you get a guitar that's alder, you don't know that you may prefer basswood or mahogany or whatever. If just Or if you get start with a mahogany guitar, you don't know that maybe you'd prefer alder or ash or something like that. Those are things that you graduate, your mindset graduates into when you determine that, uh, you know, maybe there is a difference between a 24.75 inch scale and a 25.5 inch scale. But when you're a beginner guitarist buying a first guitar or just still at a, at a you know, an entry level, you're not gonna notice that difference of three quarters of an inch. It makes no difference. The material of the body makes no difference at that point, as long as it feels good to you. You're not on a stage in a coliseum or whatever like that, where you need mad sustain for days by having some certain, you know, wood that your, your guitar is made out of, or whether it's a bolt-on or neck through. Of course, those things matter, but down the line more. All comes back to what I said about learning through experience, learning what you like or don't like about your guitar so that you can make better buying decisions on your next guitar. Like kind of like building a house. Oh, you know, it would have been nice if we had a bigger kitchen. Well, there's nothing you can do about it right now. And perhaps if you would have spent an extra 25 or 30 grand initially to build the kitchen, you wouldn't have needed that space. You don't know till you're in there. And with the guitar, you don't know until you get it. Is the, an extra thin U neck gonna be very different from a thin U neck? I don't even notice a difference in that, you know, really. There could be some comfortability things, and there's certainly differences in, in necks between a, a Gibson Les Paul, which is a lot thicker, and a Jackson Soloist, you know, but sometimes too, it's going to Guitar Center and feeling the neck, you know, rather than just searching online, go out and, you know, to a guitar shop and just feel some different necks, feel the weights of different guitars, ask the guy that works there, what is this made out of? Why is this heavier? Uh, why does is the back of this neck painted and this one has a natural satin? Ooh, I like the feel of this one better. So you do a little bit of research, those type of things will help you. But at the end of the day, it isn't gonna matter if you're just getting started. Just get something decent, just get going, let the guitar tell you and let your experience tells you, tell you uh, what you like about it. Well, I was gonna say one more thing about that. Um... Yeah. So anyways, I lost it. I can't remember exactly what I was gonna say there, but at any rate, at the end of the day, I would say don't con consume yourself with all the little things about it. Just get playing because that's what matters. If you've got the greatest guitar, but you suck at it, what does that matter? You know, I mean, of course, again, there is ex exceptions. You know, you could have the sickest guitar hanging on your wall as a showpiece, and that's totally cool too. I back that. But I'm all about getting good at guitar and then figuring out what you need to help you sound better, I suppose. So if you don't consume yourself with all those little things, you just get in there, spend a little bit of money up front, save your money, get something decent, as I mentioned. And I think at the end of the day, it will 
pay itself back in dividends. Final bonus question for you. A lot of guys wonder about cases. Should I buy a case with my guitar? Because you know, a lot of the guitars you hear me talking about, people are bummed they don't come with a case. And it's as simple as this. If you're going to be traveling with your guitar a lot, even if it's you know going to the band practice spot, you know, a couple miles down the street, then yeah, I think maybe get a hard shell case just to protect your investment, protect your guitar. You don't want anything to happen to it. But if you're really not planning on taking it places very often, then just get a gig bag. First, start with a guitar stand, at least so you can set it somewhere and it isn't just up against a wall or laying down somewhere or whatever like that. A guitar stand a lot of the time is just good enough. I mean, if you're just a single dude that lives in an apartment, having a guitar stand right there, it's cool. Not only is it a showpiece when people come over, but it's just there when you want to grab it. There's no real reason to put it in a case anyways. Um, but if there's anything, if you, you know, cases can be expensive too, hard shell cases, you know, 150, 200 bucks. So if you don't really need something like that, if it's not going in and out of a trailer or in and out of a trunk all the time and stuff like that, you can just get yourself a gig bag, a soft shell case for 30 or 40 bucks, you know, something good enough to where if you're going to put it away for a little while, you zip it up, stick it under the bed, and at least it won't be somewhere collecting dust. And when you open it back up, it'll be exactly like you left it. So that's that. Soft shell case is totally fine unless you're going to be traveling around with your guitar quite a bit. Then get yourself, spend a little extra money, get yourself a hard shell or a flight case, something like that. That's going to wrap this one up, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you don't terrorize me in the comments. You know, I'm just offering my perspective here in a way that I know from my experience. Been doing this for a minute. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to know more, please check out some more of my videos. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up for me. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can do that right there by hitting that button. Just, just hit it. Make sure you're subscribed. What does that mean? Uh, you know what? Just uh, when you go to YouTube in the future, perhaps YouTube will show my videos as suggestions suggestions to you, you know? And if you want to take it even further, hit that notification bell. What does that mean? It just means on your phone, a little silent notification will show up anytime I release a new video. And I recommend you do that. It's a big help to me. If you want to take it even further, check out my Patreon campaign or my guitar instructional DVD that I'm signing, sending out worldwide, featuring songwriting, riffing, soloing, arranging, all that cool stuff. A big help if you want to just see more, learn more. You didn't even see me play guitar in this video, but you sure can in that DVD. Finally, if you're a Kemper owner, check out my custom Kemper profile uh, with ToneCrate.com. Everything I've mentioned is linked in the description below, or you can check out RobArnoldWorld.com. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members right now. Thank you so much for watching and everybody who's been supporting. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.